and thank you so much for this opportunity to present to all of you this afternoon. Excuse me while I put that down. Thank you for the invitation to address you and I'd like to first of all uh, um, acknowledge your president, Dave uh, Carr, and I'd also like to acknowledge your uh, chief executive, Malcolm Alexander, both of whom I've met previously. Can I acknowledge there's too many of you uh, your Worship, all of you mayors from right across Aotearoa, New Zealand, all of our local board representatives, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for wanting to hear from some of the work that we're doing this afternoon. Can I just say that when I was first invited here, I was asked to address you as Associate Minister of Housing and to talk to you about social housing. But I know that the Minister of Housing was here earlier on. He spoke about Kiwi Builder and about social housing. And right after me, the Deputy Chief Executive from the Ministry of Social Development, Scott, is right here. He will talk about social housing. So I thought it would be timely for me to talk to you as Minister of Building and Construction. And many of you heard earlier on from Warren Quinn. And I'll, I'd like to talk to you about initiatives that our government is proposing, especially to address our skills shortages. As many of you know, we are short today of 30,000 skilled workers in building and construction. And in two years, we will be short, I'm told by NB, by up to 15,000 workers. The construction industry is our fourth <coughs> largest um, employer in Aotearoa, our fifth largest industry by GDP. It contributed nearly 15 billion to our economy and uh, it employs just under 250,000 people. I do want to say that yesterday the Minister of Immigration and I um, did a, a co-release and yes we're looking at allowing more of our people from overseas to come and assist us in the rebuild but our government's focus is actually on training up our own. Why? Because the majority of the workers we have right now are local folks, they are New Zealanders. When you look at the overall numbers, just over 10,000 of our construction workers right now in Aotearoa are from overseas. And so in order for us to address this issue moving forward, we have to focus on our own capacity right here at home. I also want to give you an overview of my work program as Minister of Building and Construction. We have four essential areas that we're focusing on. First, we're focused on people. Second, products. Third, performance. And fourth, processes. And if I could just cover these off a little bit more. The available and accountable workforce of people with the right skills with that the public, all of us can have confidence in, is something that we must address. Thus, the Construction Skills Action Plan that I'll spend a lot of my talk focused on. <coughs> Building products, however, we need to ensure that used appropriately, that they will contribute to safe and durable buildings. I know, because I've heard from many of the mayors, especially ones from regions, tell us that this is an issue of products. And I'll cover more about what it is that we're doing in this area. In terms of performance, we need clear and reasonable building performance requirements that looks not only to how buildings are built now, but looks to the future. And last, regulatory and commercial processes, we must ensure that they are risk-based and efficient. So one of my main strategic priorities in the building and construction area, as I said, is skills. And uh, yesterday, I'll come back to my work program, but yesterday, as I said earlier on, the Minister of Immigration and I spoke about why it is that we're focused on this. We have a construction skills, skills action plan that um, Cabinet has signed off on. But what this is, is five initiatives that we as government have come up with. And when I say we in government, I mean myself as the chair of nine ministers in total. So that includes nine ministries. So over the last few months, these nine ministries have gotten together and they've worked out where are the, uh, the gaps in skills and construction and what is it that all of our ministries are doing. And I'll give you an example of, of who these ministers are. So these myself, building and construction, Minister of Education, Immigration, Housing, um, Infrastructure, and Minister of Social Development. 
all of us putting all of our energies into what is it that the government can do to have a mobilising action plan in construction. And if you're asking why such a focus on construction skills only, it is mainly because in order for the government to deliver on so many of our initiatives, whether it be roads, infrastructure, Kiwi build, social housing, building hospitals, building schools, we must have skilled people. So what are these initiatives? The first initiative is that we will be leveraging our government procurement. As many of you know, government has billions in procurement um, and we procure a lot of work every year. What we also know is the building and construction industry only trains about 10% right now and that is not good enough in terms of ensuring that we have an expanding workforce. And so we've already begun with Cuba Build. When Minister um, Twyford sent out his invitation <coughs> to providers to put on their bids for Cuba Build, one of the weighted criteria that we asked for was what are you as a provider, as a contractor, as a builder going to, to do to ensure we increase skills and training in this area? So we're already beginning to use it as a weighted criteria. As far as I know, this is something that has not been done uh, previously. And so we're beginning small with Kiwiville, but there are other ministers that are focused just on procurement led by our Minister of Finance and they are looking at government in general. And so as we procure moving forward, um, my belief is that it won't just be Kiwi Bill we're looking at. We will look at before you as a developer or as a builder want to take on government work, you must actually tell us how you're going to be uh, adding to our construction skilled workforce. The second initiative, um, is an expansion of a, pre, of, of a prior one that we think is successful. The Sector Workforce Engagement Program, many of you know this as SWEP. For those of you from Auckland, you would know it um, more as the R project over at the Auckland Airport, where we have central government, local government, we have industry, we have industry training organisations, and um, we have especially MSD, who are involved in co-creating jobs, and they are um, reaching out to schools, we know that this is a successful program in attracting people to come in and to train. And so what we're proposing here is that we would have a construction skills hub, not just in Auckland, but to have construction skills hubs right across the regions, right across Aotearoa, as we procure government work. The third um, initiative that the government has come up with, and this is a new one, is to have group training schemes. Now, group training schemes is a business that employs apprentices or trainees and then contracts them out to host employers. Host employers will receive the labour that it needs. In return, the host provides on-the-job training for the apprentice or the trainee, which counts towards their qualification. Now, we in government are open to either a group training scheme that is run by government or to other alternatives. Um, that is one of the things that we are consulting uh, about right now. The group training schemes, uh, as far as we're informed, are more commonly seen in plumbing and in the electrical trades, but are largely unknown in the building sector. So by promoting this group training scheme and encouraging their use, we hope that it will be, that it will make it easier for the sector to provide training opportunities. The um, fourth is an expansion of the current scheme. We're looking at expanding skills for industry. So this is a partnership model right now that MSD operates with the sector to provide industry-specific training for job seekers. Skills for Industry already um, operates in the construction sector, and many of you might know the name more commonly as um, Kiwis Can Do, or Dad's Army, as, as I'm told, in West Auckland, where we have master builders, retired master builders, we have carpenters, electricians, that um, partner up with young people, especially young people who have not worked in the past, and they mentor them and attract them in to this sector. The last uh, uh, new scheme that we are introducing, and this is led by the Minister of Employment, is Dole for Apprenticeships. 
Now, I'm told, I'm informed that the Minister of Employment is looking at renaming uh, this uh, initiative uh, so that dole and apprenticeship is not used in the same sentence. But essentially, the government is looking at uh, people in receipt of benefits, particularly our young people, and this will be a wage subsidy uh, for employers to hire an apprentice uh, as long as they offer them a, a permanent full-time job. Now, these initiatives, uh, we expect that they all work together as a package. Government procurement will place education and training obligations on the sector, as I said earlier. The sector will be assisted in meeting these obligations through other initiatives, and I can give you an example of this. Say, for instance, a government infrastructure contract um, could recognise an employer's involvement in a group training scheme. A construction firm could use skills for industry, or a construction skills hub similar to other to find a person um, you know, to train as an apprentice and then they can access Dole for Apprenticeships or whatever that program is going to be called soon to subsidise their wages. And so, as I say, we're actually open to seeing whatever it is that the government can do. But can I um, emphasise that we're also coming to you as local government because we know that we cannot do this as central government on its own. So the reason why I wanted to focus on this construction skills strategy today is because today is the day that we've launched um, the consultation across Auckland, Wellington and Christchurch and I would also like to hear your feedback. Whether it's today or whether you write me a note, I would welcome your ideas. But can I also say that this construction skills action plan is only the first step. Our government is committed to acting now to ensure that the skills pipeline that we have can respond to the construction demands of our Aotearoa. This is only the first of its kind. Um, I will take a paper back into Cabinet by the end of August, which will include all of the consultation feedback that I hope I'll get from local government, as well as industry, as well as leaders in the sector. I've also asked officials at MB and officials at the other um, eight government departments to look ahead <coughs> to the future because I would like to understand the future of construction. I would like to ensure that the skills we need in Aotearoa New Zealand and the construction techniques as it evolves is something that we address moving forward. This picture will become clearer as we develop this action plan uh, moving on to the future. We're now engaging with the sector as I said and we know that we in government cannot do this alone. If I can just now go back, because I'm looking at my notes backwards, um, about uh, the work program as Minister of Building and Construction. My work is, uh, is focused on the right people. The goal of right people is about ensuring that the sector has the capacity it needs to deliver on the construction pipeline. When I talk about right time, what I mean is that the buildings are constructed now that it is very different, we know it will be very different for the kinds of buildings that we're looking forward to in the next 20 or 30 years. And some of this you would have heard others talk about. We're looking especially at things like prefab, off-site manufacturing. The way that we build houses today usually takes about 18 months to construct a bespoke house. At the moment we're looking at what we could do to ensure that we have other ways of building medium houses, especially for Kiwi. When we talk about the right skills, what we're meaning there is that we ensure we develop the workforce that we need to build both the houses we need today, as well as our houses in the future, as well as including green buildings. Because it's one thing to build good quality homes, it's another to ensure that they are also green. And in terms of collaboration, as I've said earlier on, this is work that we in government cannot do on our own. We need assistance from ourselves and we need assistance from industry. By way of conclusion, New Zealand needs an efficient and effective construction sector. We all have a role to play, especially and ensuring that our sector um, responds and invests in things like technology and green buildings. And I'd like to thank you once again, thank your president, your chief executive, and all of you for um, listening to me go on for a few minutes. I am now open to a few questions before I have to rush back to the house
and answer some questions on behalf of the Minister of Housing, who is now, I think, in Auckland, um, uh, talking about what it is that we're doing in terms of Kiwi Build and the North Coast. Thank you, Minister. Gabrielle Bundy, Cook Palmerston North City Council. Um, Minister, you spoke about uh, construction, having skilled hubs, group training schemes and host employers. How do you see that to be different to what is happening now when there's you know private providers out there that are training all our young people? They're still coming out not able to work in the, like the UCOLs and Polytechs. I'm a um, provider of a trade quite different to here on hairdressing and we have the same problems. I mean it's touched my heart really this part of the whole um, event today. So how's it going to be different than what's already in place? So what will be different about this is as far as I know we don't have a skills hub just for construction. Um, I spoke about the example of ARA which is focused on building up the airport. It's you know billions and billions of dollars worth uh, over the next 10 to 30 years. Um, and you do have industry, you do have um, private providers there, but as far as I'm told from MB and other officials, it is working well, especially in attracting students because they do actually have um, direct partnerships with schools and they attract students directly from schools into these hubs um, and they're also focused on local jobs for local people. That's one of the things, as far as I'm informed, that ARA has. I think the target in, in Auckland Airport is that 95% of the young people that they train and take on into ARA um, have to be local. And so what will be different? We don't have a construction skills hub like this. And so when you're, just to give you an example, when you're building, say, hospitals or schools or other big buildings like that, or when you're building railways, what we're proposing as government is that we have a construction type hub around that. <coughs> yes, Minister, welcome to our Mr. Council. You know, you, you mentioned previously people, products, performance processes. Um, we're really interested in, in, in performance and process. Uh, you're talking about risk basis for regulation. Um, I did hear mentioned in rural provincial that there may be some changes coming uh, to the building act and the way in which uh, the regulations are, are formed that might speed the process and enable us to deliver medium density at a cheaper price if we could be coming to that. Yes, well, there are several uh, pieces of work. Um, so in terms of risk and liability, uh, the Ministry of, of uh, Innovation and Employment is coming out to consult with uh, local councils as well as with industry in July. Um, one of the things that I hear, especially from councils, from building consent authorities and mayors, is the fact that we need to relook at and rebalance risk and liability. I agree. So for several months now, um, MB has, has been focused on what is it that we can do in the area of risk and liability to ensure that it is rebalanced. Um, and as I say, we're at that will be out for consultation around about July. I believe that it will uh, require some amendments to various legislations, especially uh, the Code and the Act. Um, but you know, I won't preempt any of that work. Um, in terms of, if, if you're also asking about, I didn't hear you ask about products, but if you're asking, because that is part of a lot of the issues that comes to me as a minister as well. What are we doing to ensure that we have good quality products? And you know, another <coughs> issue that comes up quite a lot is you know, the um, uh, taking a product. You know, you get the plans and it's a certain product, and then when you're building the, the building, it's another product. You know, it's been exchanged. Um, I'm also reviewing that right now through MB, and they are up to consult on that already. That consultation I think, started last week, if I remember correctly, um, on products. And so there's several work streams that are happening right now. And instead of, say, just committing to uh, rewriting or amending the Act right now, my preference is to have all of those work streams completed, which will be by, by the end of this year. And then we just go through, and if there are possible amendments to the legislation that is needed, we do it in one go. Great, 
only two questions. <laughs> I was expecting two. Thank you, Minister.